This is Jesse Cannon Wallace, AKA Ben's blogger, and we are gonna go for a test drive in the 2020 GLS 450. The reason I've chosen this 2020 is because it has a lot of cool features in it. So obviously 2020 was the redesign year. We've got the two 12.3 inch digital displays. I have this side set to classic, this side set to radio. We'll point away from the sun here in a second so you can see better. This car has the head-up display, which I know you can't see from over there, but I can tell because of this hole in the dashboard. The matte finished steering wheel, which I just love. And then this is the six-cylinder inline six with EQ boost, so it's got great power and a nine-speed transmission, so it's very smooth. Seat controls here on the door, including heated seats, ventilated seats and this cool button right here lets me control the passenger side seat so if um, somebody left the headrest up or the seat too far forward I can adjust that from here. So say I'm cruising along and I want to make some adjustments on this screen. I'm going to swipe to the right with my touchpad on the steering wheel and I'm going to get rid of the tachometer because really who's using the tachometer? Navigation screen can be very useful. G-force meter important but I prefer the Distronic screen here. This is part of the driver assistance package in this car. So I can see that it sees that infinity in front of me. And now it drops away. And then, I need a car to pace off of. We'll get back to that. So can you see this little white square right here? And actually, if I go to the navigation system, we should be able to see it here as well. This is the speed limit on the road that I'm on, 45 miles an hour. Um, I can make it beep or flash if I exceed that speed limit if I want to, uh, but I do not have that turned on because I don't need that. Uh, you can also turn on limit adoption, so when you're using the cruise control, it will adapt to new speed limits as you're driving. Another feature I'm a little iffy on. All right, pardon my construction here. I'm gonna turn right up here. Turn signals. I know not everyone is aware of these. Very convenient feature for letting people know what's going on. Pardon me, accelerating a little bit. All right, so this screen over here is a touch screen. I prefer not to touch while I'm driving. I find it a little awkward to lean forward. I can use my touchpad here in the center console, or I can use my touchpad here on the steering wheel, or I can say, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Let's listen to hits one. And she'll take care of it for me. I can say FM, AM, Pandora, if I have my Apple Car Play on, um, or Android Auto, depending on who you are. I am turning, and I would like to engage the cruise control. So I want to show you Distronic, so I'm gonna get up behind this minivan here. All right, new cruise control. In the past, it has always been on the back of the steering wheel, but I'm gonna turn it on and set. So now I am following this minivan. You can see right here, the car recognizes the minivan is there. I've asked it to go 70. Now the minivan get out of the way and I'm gonna resume the speed that I've requested. Because I'm not following that minivan to a stop, I am gonna to need to apply the brakes myself. So I'm going to come to a stop here behind this Toyota. And then if I come to a complete stop, my eco start stop should kick in. So the car is off. I am currently burning no gas and creating no emissions. Now I'm back on. That's extremely smooth in this car because of the 48 volt battery system. It's able to keep all of the electronics fully powered uh, and really just make everything smoothed out. All right, so I'm coming to a stop here and I'm going to engage hold braking. Simply by pressing firmly on the brake pedal, I made the word hold pop up here, and now I don't have to keep my feet on the pedals, uh, which is really convenient on a long light like this, just so I'm not having to think about it if I had to reach for something in the back seat. I don't have to worry that I'm gonna roll into the car in front of me. All right, so while I'm at it, a couple cool features. I'm gonna turn on my parking camera. So I just pushed front camera here. If I'd put the car in reverse, that would have happened as well. But look at all these different camera angles I can choose from. Magical overhead camera, side cameras. The hitch camera's nice. It shows you exactly where the trailer hitch would be if you're needing to hook up. 
All right, I am now going to touch the gas to go. I did not have to shift back in gear. I did not have to disengage hold braking. And we're gonna head back towards the dealership. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? What time is it? It is 2.25 p.m. When you get used to having an at-home assistant like Google or Alexa, it's nice to be able to do the same thing in the car. All right, so we're gonna turn into the dealership and let's see if I can demonstrate park assist for you. So I am going to turn right and let the car know I'm interested in parking by pressing that park assist button. That's the same button I used to turn on the other cameras. All right, so we're cruising along. It's looking. Let's see if it gets this spot. There we go, it saw a spot. So I'm gonna choose P to park. Please engage reverse gear. And I'm doing it. I'm in charge of the brake and the gas. The car's in charge of the steering wheel. The overhead gives me confidence that nothing's going wrong. I'm braking, changing gear, straightening me out, and I am perfectly parked between the Metris and the E-Class. Now if I wanted to disengage, I can put the car in drive, and now I'm in charge because essentially I've overridden the parking system. Park like Parktronic giving me the beep beeps. And I'm just going to pull around to this side for the dealership for a second. I want to show you something cool, but it kind of freaks people out when they see it and don't know it's coming. All right, so this particular car has the e-active body control. This was a super rare option, and in fact, you can't get it on the 21, but I am in drive. I'm going to use my dynamic select to switch to off-road mode. I am going to go home. I'm going to go to vehicle settings, assistance menu off-road assistant, free driving assist, start. All right, I can't see a legitimate reason that anyone I know would use this feature. I'm not gonna get stuck in a sand pit. <laughs> but oh my God, is it fun. Makes great videos too. All right, I should stop. It only lasts for about 30 seconds. The idea is that it can free itself if it's stuck in, in um, sand or mud or something like that. Just a fun feature that this one has. Uh, Mercedes, me, and apps. Info. Ooh, yep, she's listening. She's there. Mercedes, me, and apps are there. Info gives me graphs about the car. I do like this shortcut right here to go to my ambient light settings. I'm not a fan of multicolor. I like single color. I can adjust this. Shows up everywhere. Some people are into the multicolor. You can also do that. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Turn the ambient lighting red. Okay, I'm changing the color. So she's listening. She's happy to help you. Uh, media, radio, navigation, phone. There's wireless charging here. These are heated and cooled cup holders. So a ton of great features in the GLS. Just a quick test drive to show you a few of them. Uh, please do let me know if you have any questions. And again, this is Jesse Cannon-Wallace at Mercedes-Benz of Atlanta Northeast, aka Ben's Blogger. Thanks for riding along.